if you're an evangelist, get grounded in understanding the heart of the Lord for those who are lost, those who are dying, those who are perishing. Understand the grace that comes with that office. Don't run after the multitude of activity because activity and accomplishment are not the same and the people that sometimes you run after are not the ones that are commissioned to take you to the next level outgrow petty competition benchmark with the best that God has raised in the land read and understand the good old fashioned uh, truths that turn the hearts of men to God allow yourself not to ponder to the whimsical desires of any single generation evangelize the old evangelize the young evangelize those who are in church feeling sanctimonious evangelize those who are in the depths of manifest sin evangelize the high and mighty evangelize the broke and low and in poverty allow yourself to become everything to every man that by some means you may win some of them if you're called to be a teacher be excellent not just in bringing head knowledge but by causing men to move from the point of ignorance to the point of obedience due to revelation and understanding. Don't be excited just by spewing out facts and constructed imaginary truths with all kinds of clever abbreviations. No, no, no. That is not the office of a teacher. The office of a teacher is able to bring the, the ignorant to the obedience of understanding, is able to instruct those who are unaware to become master and skillful individuals at dishing out and handling the eternal truths, cause men who are not firm to be grounded in deep truths if you are a pastor oh get the heart of the shepherd get connected with the pain of the sheep understand that you yourself are under a charge of the great shepherd and that you will be held accountable realize that it is a service it's not an opportunity for self-aggrandizement no 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 understand get grounded in your calling what else? Understand that there's, only, there's something that only you can deliver. Your past, your personality, your failures, your successes, your capacities, they all come together to form a mosaic that has a flavor like no other on this planet. Never will there be someone who can tell that truth the way you can tell it, who can give that shout the way you can shout it, who can walk in that passion the way you can walk in it. Don't strive to be an excellent copy when you can be an irreplaceable original. So don't cower trying to copy and mimic in the natural what you see other men who have come into their own become and how they express themselves. Yes, it is good to tap grace. And when a grace is tapped, there will be a similarity of operation, but you cannot attempt to depart from your authenticity and become a fake, imi a poor imitator and therefore become a fake minister. You must be authentic. Realize there's something that only you can deliver and seek it. And when you apprehend it, deliver it without fear and without favor. Also know that you are part of a larger body. You are part of a larger body globally and you're also part of a mandate locally. You are part of a commission that has a lead. And when God brings you up to a point, when you have a commission that you're leading, realize that you're part of a larger global body. God cannot call you to unnecessarily be setting fire in his sitting room, thinking that the bedroom is safe, or in the lounge, thinking that the study is okay. No, no, no. You must understand that you are part of a body you are part of a body. And walk in that wisdom, walk in that understanding. There is so much truth to be delivered that you cannot make it your primary agenda without God expressly calling it you to do that, to become like the chief person who, is, who establishes order in the body. No, no, no. You are not the prefect over the body of Christ. 
My brother, you are not the Holy Ghost. My sister, you are not the Holy Ghost. Take it easy. Concern yourself with your mandate. Apply yourself fully to your mandate. And allow God to be God. When it is something that is now touching on your assignment, when it is something that God inspires you to speak to, speak to the thing and deal with it exhaustively and proceed to follow your calling. Follow your calling. And finally, for today, for this particular installment, once you are stable in your calling and you understand who you are, don't walk in jealousy. Don't walk in jealousy. Don't walk in petty strife. Trying to outdo and see who preached better, who had more responses, who raised a bigger offering, who gave a bigger tithe, who did this, who did that. That kind of strife is for babies, for children who still need milk. Because we know that everyone has a cause set ahead of them. And if you run in front of your others, your, your brother's lane or your sister's lane and you reach before, you will not be crowned just because you reached ahead of them. You will only be crowned if you finish your own race, not somebody else's race, not a race that the world has decided that you should be running. Settle down and focus on what God has called you to do and the connections that you have been ordained for. They are the ones that you should focus on. Yield yourself to the authority that God has appointed for you. Yield yourself to the seasons that God has brought your way and then thrive and prosper in them and it shall be well with you. This is Dr. Akiro saying I love you and God has a purpose for you. Blessings. <laughs>